I'm sorry, I forgot to really say, you here. need to stop drinking Coke Zero on stream. Is it? You're um, preaching pro Palestine and you're drinking Costa Rica. Please, Costa Rica. At least pretend. Do it off stream. Right, okay, I'll put it in. I'll put it in a glass. <laughs> Is Pepsi okay? No. <laughs> No soda, sorry. I didn't know. I didn't know it was like that. Guys, mental health is a really important issue. A lot of people don't really take it seriously, <laughs> like me. I take it seriously. I, I'm, an, I'm an advocate for mental health, for depression. I'm an advocate for you to be depressed. But I do take it very seriously, and that is why we all need to come together in this trying time to support Hassan Piker because he's going through a hard time, guys. Support Hassan Piker's mental health, please. Please support Hassan Piker's mental health. So Nick came on. We do tea time with Nick, and he showed me uh, these girls. They were were uh, trying to be J-pop. They're still young and it's like cute, but it's also very cringe at the same time. Strawberry, and then you repeat back, blueberry. You're gonna say, Betty John. Are you ready? Yo! But a big part of what I talk about always is like how insane and unhinged people get on TikTok and on Twitter and like immediately dox people, which these people had been doxed. No. Right? No. So oh, like on the on. one hand, we were just like joking and making jokes about how cringe they were. But also on the other hand, we were like, how insane. Like, please do not. Like, yeah. I can't believe people dox these people. It's crazy. So what ended up happening is, you know, I ended the stream and then the next day I found out that like people were canceling me and Nick saying that we were responsible for the demise of this uh, J-pop idol group. Nick is not green and Hassan together at last. This is what I've wanted the entire time, guys. Okay, this is uh, the collab of the century. I'm the biggest fan of Nick is not green. I'm the biggest fan of Hassan Piker. So seeing them come together, it's so beautiful. I couldn't be happier. So Hassan at one point was one of the biggest streamers in the world. Technically, he still is. I mean, the dude gets like 17,000 live viewers. He's doing super well for himself, but that's nothing compared to where he used to be. Hassan used to average like four to 50,000 live viewers on live stream. He was absolutely destroying the game when all of the riots and stuff were going down during the election season. He actually peaked in live viewers on November 3rd, 2020 during the last presidential election at 226,000 live viewers, live people watching him. That is absolutely insane. That is absolutely bonkers. You know, whatever you think of him, you kind of got to respect uh, the fact that he ever got there in the first place. You know, despite the fact that him getting there was like parroting sh leftist political takes and uh, spreading misinformation, encouraging cancel culture, okay? Despite the fact that's how we got there, you gotta respect the grind a little bit, okay? Just a little bit. Give him the smallest bit of credit over here, guys, okay? But things are trending down for Hassan Piker. He's been losing viewers and subs for quite a bit. I believe he lost 6,000 Twitch subs in one month a few months ago, and that's due to a few major factors that are going on right now. Firstly, the misinformation he's been spreading is actually catching up to him. It was out of control for a while. One great example is during the conflict in Ukraine, he spread a lot of misinformation like claiming that Russia would never invade and then had to walk that back. Russia was deploying units across the Ukraine border. U.S. intelligence said that they were going to invade, but Hassan and his intelligence team of absolutely no one says no. And we got a lot to talk about. I was right about Ukraine. That's right. War is not imminent. Oh, shock. I think maybe I'll tell my editors to do this, but I think I'll just change like... I'll change this every day to Ukraine is still has still not been invaded by Russia every day. Change it to Russia still has yet to invade Ukraine. And it's like day 11 at this point, you know what I mean? And I think this is a point in time where a lot of people realize that Assad is not a political commentator in a serious sense. He's not educated about these issues. He's just a guy who screams on Twitter. And hey, we're all people who scream on Twitter here, okay? I'm a guy who screams on Twitter. I'm a fucking idiot. I'm a retard. My haircut looks like, um... What is it going to be this week? Rebecca Sugar or something like that. Okay, I know. I know. But regardless of that, I think it's fine to be a fucking idiot if you're not going to pretend to be something you're not, right? But Hassan is a fucking moron that pretends to be educated about a lot of issues and has bit him in the ass really hard. He claims to do on the ground reporting. Keep in mind, he has no like actual source for on the ground reporting for any of the places he reports on. He just posts from Twitter and calls that reporting. That's like his major groundbreaking reporting over here. On the ground, respected journalism at Hassan Piker Industries, okay? When there was an attack on a US base, Hassan immediately said that it was an inside job by the CIA. Wait, what? Attack on U.S. consulate in Iran yes, happening mom. now? False flag. 100%. M.E.K. false flag. M.E.K. Uh, actors. 0% chance that that is so f***ing sussy. Oh, no. 
Oh, that's what is that's what's going on in Iraq, the American base that was under attack. No fucking shot. When I say MEK, I just mean CIA. It, I said MEK, but I mean CIA. Rumors saying the missiles were launched from Iran. I mean, dog. Come on, bro. Like, come the fuck on. You think, like, think about this. The Iranian government, after like years of crippling sanctions, despite fucking following months. the denuclearization agreements under Donald Trump, still got more sanctions and still got fucked over time and time again. Who are still trying to, according to the U.S. State Department, uh, very close to finalizing the denuclearization deal this week, ends up bombing an American base? Like, really, dude? What the f*** are you talking about? Hassan then called viewers who question this narrative insane warmongers. Yes, dude, I'm wrong, okay? It's probably Iran. You're right. It's probably Iran f***ing blowing shit up for no reason. You're right. Let's believe that instead. You got it. It's it's Iran doing it 100%. Iran's the one doing it. They're irrational. God damn it, dude. I'm so annoyed. Like, one fucking dub for the American intelligence, and they never shut the fuck up. These goddamn stupid, pathetic, little sniveling cowards living in the Imperial core that regularly are like, I love war! I love war! I fucking love murder! I want more war! Yeah, the warmonger is the guy who's questioning you. And during the Israel-Palestine stuff, he was still a member of the Leftovers podcast with Ethan Klein, and he managed to torch his biggest friendship during this by being an asshole. Ethan was not totally condemning every Israeli, saying they deserve to die. Meanwhile, Hassan's chat was because they live on stolen land, and when these people were calling Ethan a piece of shit, they were like digging through his wife's stuff, trying to find, you know, who she killed in the IDF or whatever, which I don't even think she got anyone, to be honest with you. They were basically saying that Hassan is hanging out with a subhuman, and people in chat were calling Ethan a subhuman and Hassan was okay with it. He was like, well, I can't do anything about it. Keep in mind, if you insult Hassan even slightly as a large streamer, like XQC or someone like that, he will cry about it and cry about it fucking endlessly, okay? I mean, just recently, he spurred the fuck out at Ludwig for even making a video with him in the title and thumbnail where he wasn't even critical of Hassan. He just had him in the title and thumbnail. Imagine being that mad about that. But this is the kind of thing you deal with with Hassan Piker. He's a very sensitive person. But if you're sensitive and Hassan makes fun of you for that, then he's based, right? He's cool, actually. And then Hassan's insane fan base started attacking Ethan over all this sh and he just like I said he didn't even stop them he didn't care listen everyone in my periphery everyone in my circle all the leftist uh, people that I watch that I'm part of that watch this show because I consider myself a part of that side are all pretty much uncritically accepting of Hamas propaganda and un caring about the revision rewriting of history right before our eyes about this stuff. So I'm not seeing a lot of people, even though you might look at the popular media and say, you know, everybody's supporting Israel. The popular media's defense of Israel is cartoonishly dumb and evil. You know, burn, burn them all to the ground. They have a right to defend themselves. Bomb God, like psycho sh Okay. But on the left, I don't see anyone saying what I'm saying right now. I just see the opposite. And so that's why I feel that I need to say it. I don't, if you're going to extrapolate from this that I don't care about Palestinians dying, then you're definitely reading way too far into this. And you're also, in my opinion, really callous. And this led Ethan to basically detach from the leftist space entirely because of the treatment he got from Hassan and Hassan's various sycophants like Frogan, who repeat whatever he says unquestioningly. And if you ever wanted to peek into the mind of the average Hassan Piker viewer, well, now we actually have it. We did a scientific study. I got a lot of researchers and on-the-ground reporting to conduct this, and uh, we managed to find one through this study that is a very a very good case study for the kind of people that watch Hassan Piker. They're f***ing stupid, crazy people. Sh shocker. Giant shocker. Shocker, I know. So Hassan recently traveled to Australia to hang out with I Did A Thing and Boy Boy, two pretty big creators who do a lot of interesting stuff. For example, they basically infiltrated an American intelligence base in Australia and did a whole video about it. Not with Hassan, keep in mind, that was just I Did A Thing and Boy Boy, but I'm just saying that was a cool video. Like these guys do make cool stuff now and then. Well, Hassan decided to do some collab content with them and one of these pieces was an IRL stream. During that stream, one of Hassan's viewers approached him and chastised him for drinking Coke Zero on stream. Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot to really say, you here. need to stop drinking Coke Zero on stream. Why? Boycott. Wait, is it? You're preaching pro-Palestine and you're yeah, drinking all this boycott stuff. So please, Hassan, okay. at least pretend. Do it off stream, oh, please. Okay, I'll put, in, I'll put in a glass. <laughs> is Pepsi okay? No! Is it? <laughs> Okay. No soda, son. I didn't know. I didn't know it was like that. <laughs> so the reason this fan is mad, in case you're wondering what the f 
this even means is because Coca-Cola operates in Israel because they're a giant global company. I mean, like the most famous soda in the world, okay? Pepsi lovers owned, okay? Pepsi sells destroyed. Coke chads stay winning as always, but Coke operates everywhere and everywhere includes Israel. And according to this website that I found that talks about how people should boycott Coca-Cola, Coke operates on stolen Palestinian land. And so this person from Hassan's chat who approached him in real life believes that by drinking Coca-Cola, you are profiting off of this stolen land by supplying Coca-Cola with the $2 you spent on that soda. Keep in mind, Hassan Piker caters to these people regularly by engaging in cancel culture and encouraging people to be criticized over the most nothing sh** ever. So obviously this kind of thing uh, is what his audience cares about. They, these are the kind of people who like him. And the performative activism here is so transparent too. Like she even says to him in person, she's like, well, if you're not going to stop drinking it, then at least pretend to stop drinking it. Like this just shows to me that she doesn't actually like understand why this is important or why this boycott matters and she doesn't even really care she just wants him to pretend about this issue to validate her feelings and make her feel safe in her home that she's not personally drinking coke zero okay and so i posted about this on twitter saying you reap what you sow because this nut job is exactly the kind of audience Hassan has managed to cultivate for for months and years at this point right he simultaneously will call out people on the right for making edgy jokes while also laughing about cops dying and supporting edgy jokes when they play to his political side but all of the misinformation he spread the audience he's cultivated and his lost connection with Ethan Klein is really starting to pay off. And by pay off, I mean backfire with declining stream numbers. And he's very sad about it. I'm sad. I think the streams are bangers, but people just don't see them. We used to be a community. I hate what my community is becoming. I swear, Twitch streaming isn't about the actual content. It's about whether people want to pay attention to you or not and clout. All that shit was banger and 13,000 people watched. Like I'm gaming at 8 p.m. I'm done. I hate this job. I'm not streaming today. I'm going to kill myself. Wow. So it seems like Hassan is finally coming to terms with the fact that the quality of his content doesn't actually matter. What people want to watch him for is to see him parrot the same dipshit talking points that they personally believe in and get to have regurgitated to them to make them feel good, okay? They don't actually give a shit about finding the truth. They don't care about solving these issues. They just care to see their favorite giant, you know, streamer Hassan repeat what they want to hear back to themselves. That's basically it, right? And now some of them have actually wisened up to how much of a shill he is. The more critical members of the audience have f***ing dipped. They're leaving. They're not interested anymore because he's not the number one lefty on YouTube anymore, right? Leftism is not the coolest thing in the world anymore. He can't ride that trend and he has to actually work to make content. Boo-hoo! Now you have to actually make good content on stream and try instead of putting on a video and then leaving the f***ing room with your chair for 20 minutes straight. Now you can't just eat your lunch and watch someone else's video and say nothing about it. You have to actually try. Wow, that's sad, dude. I feel bad for you. Your life is really hard, man. Streaming is really hard. It's socially draining. You really are a lost soul, man. I feel bad for you. Send this man Lexapro in the mail right now, okay? Save him. Now, just to be very clear and transparent, because I don't want to spread misinformation, that last message was uh, taken out of context, apparently. It had nothing to do with streaming numbers, just to get that straight. Uh, it was it was about like some, some other joke, some had told and he was just like parroting it about taking a heart monitor in the pool okay he's not saying he wants to end his life because his stream numbers are doing bad regardless of that tim pool was posting saying don't hurt yourself like Dude, I, I'm going to be honest. I don't think Hassan would do that anyway. He probably loves himself too much to hurt himself in literally any way. I just don't see it happening. I'm sorry. I That's forgot really to say player. you need to stop drinking Coke Zero on stream. Shutting down the mental institutions and in society has had a profound and negative impact on the public at large. It's had a profound and terrible impact. Like if a crazy person like that came up to me, I would immediately be like, you're so right. That's completely true. I'm so sorry. And I would tell them whatever they need to hear in order for them to leave. We have to figure out one way or another to get them to, to, to de-aggro this person. And now it seems to me like Hassan is trying to actually escape the uh, only politics thing that he's been locked into. And he'll probably get some level of success on that kind of stuff, actually. And you know what? I support him doing this kind of like more lifestyle content where he just hangs out with people. If he wants to do that stuff that's not political and it's just him hanging out, having a fun time, that's probably for the best. Maybe we'll get less of him acting like a art on stream and I won't have to talk about him every week. But the problem he's going to face is that he's built his entire brand up until this point on politics, really, on people liking his takes, right? And at that point in time, you know, months ago when he was streaming, if if people are going to watch other stuff he does, it's because they like his takes, right? They don't really like Hassan for Hassan. They like him for the, the image he projects on the internet. And the struggle is going to be that he's not going to get the same kind of views if he's not parroting these shitty takes, right? If he does IRL streams, he's going to dip below 10,000 viewers. He might even get as low as like four or 5,000, which is still amazing streaming numbers, but it's just not the kind of stuff that he wants to be getting. And that's why he's so upset about this, right? He seems like a pretty numbers obsessed person, I would say. And also beyond that, if he wants to expand into a more normie audience, he also has to deal with the fact 
fact that a lot of people just don't like him as a person because of his repeated behavior. Ethan Klein's audience certainly isn't going to be inclined to watch anything Hassan does for a while, regardless of if he's like parroting shitty political takes or not, and is just like hanging out being a normal guy with I did a thing, right? He's going to have a hard time accessing those people because he's turned off a lot of normies to his stuff with how crazy he acts. Given he seems to be a pretty numbers focused dude, until that works out, we can probably expect to see a lot more messages of him complaining that he's just not getting the numbers he wants to get. Very sad. Uh, you know, I, I really feel bad for him. I know streaming is a really socially draining job. So, uh, you know, hopefully someone can once again, get him on antidepressants real quick and he'll be, he'll be fine in no time guys. Okay. We'll save Hassan Piker. Me and you personally, we're going to save Hassan Piker. Me and you, me and you, bro, we're going to save Hassan Piker from himself. Anyway, um, that's about it. Uh, I don't know if this Red Bull has anything to do with Israel, but if it does, be sure to let me know because I will be drinking way more of it. See you guys all in tomorrow's video. Bye -bye. And be sure to become a member. For $5 a month, they get the members only podcasts and exclusive videos that only members get. Thanks so much for your support. Yeah.